Yeah. What are some of your favorite, um, like, uh, things uh, like basically, uh, assets or tools to use, uh, in order to generate some of that, that yield that you're talking about there. USDC is my favorite asset. Like I've been USDC maxi for a while, like, and it, I, I love it. Like, I think it's just brilliant. The, the amount of flexibility and, and everything you get with it. It's just so underrated people, people just like, yeah, it's just a stable coin. That's all it does. And I'm just like, no, 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 you can, you can do so much for USDC in, in DeFi and, um, and then also using your other assets to unlock USDC to to recollateralize and 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 do all sorts of different things. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I kind of think that's want. well. The only thing I was just going to say to that is I think there's it's kind of music to some people's ears because there's all different types, right, who want to jump into crypto, but they're scared of the volatility. They don't understand some of the concepts and stuff like that. And they're like, oh wait a minute, you like one way to kind of get people introduced into crypto kind of smoothly and easily is like. Oh, wait a minute i can just like change my dollars into usdc right which is a stable coin for crypto what's a stable coin oh it's just a synthetic asset to the us dollar that's always stable to the dollar okay cool and then you mean i can actually make like a good chunk of money just doing that instead of actually you know getting exposure to you know some of the other assets which i might not understand or might be too risky right you got a lot of people with that kind of mentality and i think you know for people who especially maybe um what do you call it? Just not used to crypto in general. They, they would like that idea. Um, and so like, I think that's kind of a breath of fresh air to some people um, as well in the market. Of course we have a lot of DJs yeah. in the chat too. But. People, <laughs> people, people don't understand. People don't understand that like a lot of the time keeping your portfolio intact until you get yeah. to the right time in the market is like key. Right. So my, mm. my girlfriend got into like crypto six months ago. My, my key thing for her was like to keep her portfolio intact. Like, so yeah she she lost you know she had a six figure portfolio she lost probably three four percent or two percent or something in that crash right just because of we exactly. dampened the volatility with some of the riskier plays a lot of it was usdc backbone yeah. and now she's like well positioned right into this next phase in the market to actually deploy that capital so people just look at it binary like if it's usdc oh I'll, uh, that, i'm not going to make anything i'm only making 10 percent, 20 percent of my money and i want to make 100 so it's about keeping the portfolio intact until the right time and then you can deploy and and, and, and recognizing where we are in the cycle is a dynamic thing um which we all have to discuss and, and analyze and use everybody's data here you know plants is uh, your technicals miguel's fundamentals we look at it and then we kind of like okay now it's time for the, the right time to deploy slowly and accumulate um so it's not all or nothing you know people are like oh usdc that's a little rubbish you know like it's like some of the most powerful um uh yeah that's how you make your money basically by keeping the portfolio intact yeah, definitely. What are you guys' thoughts on, on this, right? Like uh, Monkey saying, I like USDC too, but can't USDC get rugged or turned off for the admin key or can't like there be like, what do you call it? Like a basically a censored transaction. You know, some people who are like, you know, uh, of the decentralized nature in crypto uh, who are really of that part, right? Get kind of conflicted about it. What do you guys think about that idea? They, they have no, they have no, there's nothing out here really. I mean, the, the, it, it, <sighs> Basically, we're we're okay. Wait, let me say this in a row. I'm about to say this. <laughs> but, uh, uh, God damn it! All I don't right. know what you're about to say, but say whatever you like, bro. That's, that's so what you figure out the dance. Is basically, Sorry? like that's USDC. It's the best. It's the best. Uh, <laughs> the best I figure out the dance, baby. <laughs> oh, that's fine. What's the problem with saying that? No, no, I was gonna say it even worse than that. Honestly. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> so it's this whole thing where okay. USDC is basically a JP Morgan slash Fed coin. It is, but they're keeping on the low. So they're they're not going to do a bunch of draconian things with it, at least for this cycle. I'm going to reevaluate USDC for next cycle because that's possibly when they might start getting a little testy with stuff. And then right now there is a couple of um, a couple of uh, stable coins because I've been I, that's one market I've been paying attention to very very closely is the stable coin market. And I see two or three contenders that may be able to actually be long-term stable coins. One of them is like SUSD for synthetics, but it's just too small right now. It's not big enough. It's not It's not liquid enough. And um, there isn't that many places you can accept it or the places that do accept it are quite degenerate, basically. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of not very, you have to be very high level. You have to have very high level of uh, use of DeFi to even be able to use a coin like that efficiently. Uh, USCC can be used everywhere. It's it's very useful and it's been the the fastest growing stablecoin 
now. It's it's catching up to Tether. It's going to pass Tether up. I promise you that. Like it's going to happen. And until te- until USDC is number one, I don't think USDC does anything. To, to make itself look bad. Because in comparison, right, if you're looking between Tether, because I like Tether too. I like Tether. I like the people behind it. But, and then they're, I know they're, they're, they're allies, but the U.S. government and a lot of the governments around the world, they want to knock Tether the fuck out. Mm-hmm. They really do. But, and and this is something Mashinsky even said on the 24-hour um, uh, live stream I did uh, over New Year's last year, was he was saying that the U.S. government would, t- would have took out USDT and put laws down, except it would have hurt USDC. Mm, interesting. So, so they can't. And why, and why is that the case? The, yeah, they like, can't. What was their explanation basically? It hurt. Yeah, it hurts their coin. So it's like. Well, wow. no, I know, but can you explain that why a little? Why? Bit? Okay, so if they put if they put if they put a law, they can't put a law to should target one coin. They have, it targets all coins. So if they if they put if they put restrictions on stable coins right now, one it hurts the dollarization of the crypto system, which is bad for mm-hmm. the U.S. That's that's this demand, and they need that. So okay, we can't do that. Okay, if we put restrictions on stable coins, shit, we just put restrictions on ourselves. Crap. So it's this whole thing where they're just making USDC accepted everywhere and they're giving it liquidity. They're making sure it's used. Every- I mean, it's safe. You know, there's never any FUD about USDC anywhere. Go- go- try to find FUD on USDC. I dare you. Go ahead. Look. Yeah, you know, in the chat, that was the most that we've seen out there is, is about that, uh, that opinion that we just uh, threw up there, right? Right. So that's about it because Tether takes up all the bad news and then they propagate it too mm. and they push it out there too. Right. Yep. Just like there's, there's this fun, I forgot the name of the fun. I think they wanted us to go bankrupt already. They were shorting, they were shorting link chain link and doing all this research to then. Yeah. They were doing yeah. all this, they were doing all this research to fud out link because they had shorts on link and it didn't work out and stuff and everything. But like, that's the sort of thing is like, we're, we're, we're going to see these dirty tactics from these guys. We're like, we're, we're, we're getting sort of the amateurs from the equities market. And we're, we're going to start seeing the Carl icons who are starting to tiptoe in. If he's saying that, like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about buying, I don't know. <laughs> he's already dollars. got it. Carl icon is one of the most cutthroat motherfuckers you ever do that. He's a vulture, bro. That, that you think you're that smart, that dude. <laughs> <laughs> that guy probably already owns like if, if he's telling you he's got 1.5 billion that that fucker probably has 12 billion in, in crypto for all we know yeah he's, probably, he's got a, he's got a good chunk you know yeah so this, help this, it support help and support the dip up at you know above that 30k mark right uh, i'm and, okay with it i'll allow it <laughs> right and then too right like this is something i was i was telling charlie this in private a while back this must have been quarter four and quarter one that i was going to make a huge allocation into a uh, maker token that when it was 300 200 i was like wow this seems very undervalued right what happened tether and usdc which is coinbase and uh i think i'm not sure it's bitfinex or or uh well, i forgot the exchange that owns uh i think it's bitfinex it's bitfinex yeah, yeah, yeah bitfinex they they were the main two net buyers of us of a uh, maker they pumped the price token to over 2200 dollars to and then win the vote and then what, what did they do with the vote well they they voted in that the largest collateral to be tether and usdc so l- literally it's like 20 percent ethereum now for the backing of die token and the rest of it is usdc and tether so now if one of those rugs it, it they, they basically what they did is they just destabilized their own their own competition <laughs> which in usdc so it's like okay you want die go ahead use your decentralized currency oh wait something happens to us Ooh, Dai's not gonna be doing so good. Oh no, no, <laughs> <So> sorry. <laughs> sorry. And it's it's that sort of so that's what I'm saying. Like before that, Dai was the coin. Now Dai, there's nothing out here. There's no mm-hmm. and and the only other the, there's other tokens. There's something called like L L U S D. Probably the best one out here right now. It's too early now. It, it probably needs mm-hmm. another year or two to gain liquidity and get acceptance in the market. I like the I like that coin, but it's you couldn't you can't use it. It's too early. Like it, you're risking quite a lot. So you you there's really one game in town. Yeah. 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 I should I should have cap I should have categorized it as just stables. Like because we could there's a big we oh. could debate the, the the properties of them all and and, and and kind of the use case. But one of my favorite things like with stable coins now is like just basically using stable coins um, to generate uh, yield and generate a uh, risk on position right so you can basically just use in a non volatile asset to farm or to, to yeah. yield a volatile right. asset right and it actually accumulate a position in a volatile asset with a non volatile asset so you basically just can't lose on your portfolio and then you get an upside 
So like this is like hugely powerful to be able to do this oh, yeah. like and yield in both ways and then you're still capturing the upside while you and then you don't get wiped out in the in in the massive drawdown. So it's um yeah, people just don't understand these techniques. Like they're so simple. I'm not telling any, anything any, this is not groundbreaking, but people just don't do this stuff. They just want to go all risk on um yeah. with everything no, and they don't just yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was just going to read this real quick. But no, I agree with what you're saying 100%. I don't want to cut you off on that either. But uh, HexMonkey with the $25 Super Chat just saying, thanks for the USDC analysis uh, there. Here's a donation for the <laughs> cost of the Red Bull Red Bull Detox program you guys have to have uh, after the Q3 course. Yeah, we'll need it. We'll need it. We'll but need no, it. yeah, no, I, I think, you know, what you're saying there, Kevin, and what DCC is saying, like, they're kind of two different parts of uh, of the system, right? It's like, okay, you got the fundamentals of what is happening around these things, which, you know, there is a push and pull through governments and, and regulations and all this stuff, but doesn't mean you can't use it to make money in the meantime, right? right? Like, um, and I think we talked about that a little bit before the stream, right? Talking about Chainlink specifically, it's like, yeah, last year it was a great thing to use to make money. There's a lot of gains to be had, but at the same time, there are some weaknesses in its fundamentals. So uh, some of the times, right, when the fundamentals and the making making of money kind of have some conflict, um, there's there's some people that if you look at like every all the information that you have, then it makes it harder to make a decision. Should I be doing this or should I not be versus it like, at the end of the day, the main thing that we're here for, right? Cause we're in it for the tech is like, can I make money on this strategy? Right. And if you can make money on this strategy and it's, and it's, you know, working for now, it's like, it's not that you ignore the fundamentals. It's just like, you use that as kind of like, okay, I need to understand like where the trap door is, where the risks are and where I might kind of uh, come up on some road bumps uh, or some speed bumps. But in the meantime, right, I'm going to use this strategy to, you know, cause I think you even mentioned it yourself, Kevin, Right, these yields won't last forever on on these high yield uh, platforms with crypto. But while they're here, we need to take advantage of them. That's one hundred percent for sure. I don't know what you guys think about that kind of conflict. Oh yeah, I mean, I'll get to those limits of the course, but I mean, I've got sort of a map of roughly in, in the next two years. Basically, most most of the tokens out here right now, their their yields disappear. So there's going to be, mm. I, I expect some volatility and you know, the, the chaff or the bullshit of these tokens. A lot of these tokens are going to zero, but you can make a ton of money on them while they're here right now and then go into the tokens actually have demand. Because at the end of the day, like, um, this is the best example I know of, right? I mean, but it's probably not the PC example, but I mean, but this is the best way I can make it so everyone understands. And, uh, you know, you know, this is DC here, so I say ridiculous shit. So, <laughs> at least you preface it. That's, thank you for that. <laughs> right, right. I say ridiculous shit, but it's like I want to. I, I like to say things where everyone. It's so ridiculous. Everyone gets it, and but that at least it gets in it gets in the head a little bit, right? So, what, why do people sell drugs? Is because what? Why are drugs such a good product? Because it's just unbelievable. Once the customer has it, they want more of it. So it's it's just it's just bottled up demand basically, is what people want. So why, do, why does the United States government want their dollar to be used around the world? Because it causes demand worldwide, which absorbs, which exor they're basically, it dampens their, their printing of the dollar so they can spend and they have more people that, that can distribute that, that printing out to and then allows them to do what they do secretly and, and fund wars and do all that other stuff. So um, this what's going on with these yields right with on some of these bad coins is they're, they're giving a lot of tokens so we're 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 essentially apes or monkeys or, or just crazy tribalistic humans that we're incentive based so if you're giving somebody a large incentive with these tokens with the with the uh, inflation of a token then people start using it it's it has a lot of demand but once that starts drying up it, it then it just comes down to like well the brass tax of it does it is the product actually very good and i think a lot of the products out here are not that good Honestly, but the yields are amazing. So I'm like, Pfft. I can tell you right now, I, I was using Uniswap before it was even it had a token or anything. It was just a service. So just knowing, I know Uniswap is going to be here in 10, 20 years. It's mm -hmm. going to be right. It's already alive with like in Justin Horowitz. I mean, like it's, it's sort of the, the sort of things. If you look out there to see what you actually were using, you, you know, what's going to survive like OpenSea probably going to survive. Why? Because you were using it. Most of the DeFi community was already using it. So it's not going to disappear. There's stuff that like, there, there's certain things. If you can figure out long-term, you make the money and other stuff, right? But then you come back to home base. What's actually going to survive? If everything, if all the yields went away, 
and you you were only had to use them. And so some some things like built-in stuff like Celsius have its own yield, and then you have stuff like Hex, which has a built-in yield, right? Which is never going away. Ethereum built-in yield after EIP fifteen fifteen. These built-in things, okay, cool. Then you can calculate that. That's not disappearing. But on other stuff, that's going to go away. So it has mm-hmm. to come down to can they retain customer retention retention over time, and that's the gamble. And if you figure that out, you. Money flows <laughs> from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? You just want that continuous flow of money, and you, and you need it to keep moving. And as long as you keep, you know, uh, doing that, then you know you'll be good. So it, we, there's a ton of strategies, and and I love that we can talk about all of them openly in the course. And um, because not everybody's going to use every single strategy, but right, right. being aware of all these different strategies to make as much money as you can, then you know, it's not necessarily about like, like Kevin said before, making exactly as much money as you can, but going towards making, right. you know, a good chunk of money without being too greedy, which is kind of that balance that most people, especially newer people in the market have a really tough time with. 